Well, Pats, we're only 12 days away from Microsoft releasing Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 on the Xbox July 27th, which is also going to bring a performance boost to us on the PC. Super excited for that. The RTX 40 series GPU is said to be rumored twice as fast as the RTX 3090. I just want to know how. And if you guys didn't know this, I just found out, but we're going to get a Honda Jet for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. And it's kind of the thing that nobody asked for, but I think if it's done well, uh, and also it's freeware, by the way, it should be pretty epic. So let's check it out. Yeah, hopefully that uh, that wasn't offensive to any Honda owners out there, but I, I just had to do it. It's such an awesome video. I instantly thought of that the moment I saw this Honda Jet for uh, Flight Sim 2020, but we'll get into that in a moment here. Uh, guys, first thing I'm going to touch up on, I did go over this last week. This was the uh, update, which is going to bring the FPS performance boost. Again, if you want more information on that, check it out. I kind of explain what they did to get that. You know, we're really close to finding out what it is. Expect more information and content. As soon as I get that update, you know, I'll have content this, that same day, July 27th. So come back for that. Moving on to the next big thing here, July 15th, uh, Microsoft has released their development update. And it's pretty standard. You know, they go over a couple different things. Uh, this week, they've they've uh, highlighted two things. Pilot Emily, uh, which she gave her reason of why she flies. It's pretty cool. They're, they're asking different pilots, you know, why, uh, why they chose to fly. And they're giving their experience on that, which is really neat. But as we scroll down, two more quick things. Uh, they partnered here with Orbis International, which is a nonprofit organization uh, that helps treat people either that are going blind or that are blind, and they try to help them see. So it's pretty cool. It's a MD-10, I believe, and it flies around. It's literally a flying hospital. So what we're getting for the sim, it's going to be a non-flying, so it's going to be a static aircraft in which you can check out and walk through. It's fully modeled inside. Uh, we'll see if we can do that in VR. If we can, I will have a video on that. But it's pretty neat that they partnered with them, and it would have been great had we had a flying model. But uh, we'll take it. We'll, we'll take a static model, you know, to check out in VR. Hopefully it works in VR, because if it doesn't, uh, I guess 2D will have to work. You know, as we scroll down here, I just want to highlight one quick thing. This has been coming up on the Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 Facebook group. A lot of people, and I say a lot, um, everyone that I know that has a 6800 XT or 6900 or any other... AMD, uh, th there's quite a few of you guys having issues with uh, crash to desktop CTDs. So uh, just want to let you know, it's under investigation. And that's kind of all we have at this point. Uh, they're aware of it. People keep on asking. And, and I really have nothing. There's only a handful of you guys in the forums uh, or in the Facebook group. So it's kind of tough. You guys try to help each other out. But all I see is continued frustration between you guys on what you're going to do. And should you guys jump ship and, and come over to NVIDIA or what? But anyways, they're aware of it, guys. They see the issue, so just be patient and uh, hang tight there. Coming back to this list over here, it kind of bums me out. I don't see a lot of stuff happening on here on the feedback snapshot for the VR. As you can see, the two items that they've uh, started, uh, VR controllers, support is missing. So it says release is 2021. So before this year is up, we're going to get hand controllers for the sim in virtual reality. I hope it's done right because, honestly, I really want that. It's going to be a game changer for me. Uh, I mean, I don't I don't even want to touch my mouse and keyboard when I'm when I'm flying in virtual reality. The second thing at the bottom support for VR headsets, uh, the Oculus and the Vice, which I think that's a vibe, the Vive. I'm sorry, I said the Vibe. Yeah. So the HTC Vice, Vive, I'm all over the place. Hopefully they include Pimax as well. You know, a VR flight sim guy, he does have the Pimax 8K headset. You know what we need for those headsets, it's the support for the wide field of view. Again, the Reverb G2 is an excellent headset. The quality, the resolution is really good. What's missing is, you know, getting out of that binocular vision, which is just so frustrating. Now I have to say, honestly, the RTX 3090, which it's extremely impossible to get it's super expensive you know why does an rtx 4090 or 40 series gpu even matter honestly the better those gpus are i think the lower the prices will go although i'm not sure if we're going to fully recover from this i kind of feel like the prices got pushed super far out of control hopefully we do recover and come back to a normal place but anyways as we see here guys the rtx 4090 is being reported to be twice as fast as the rtx 3090 and these are just some rumors that are coming out and i mean uh, I think they show here 18,430 CUDA cores, right? And so that's 
71% more than what we had in the RTX 3090, which was around 10,000 CUDA cores. So guys, 18,400 CUDA cores versus 10,000. I mean, right now, I think we're just gonna need a better CPU to really keep up with that more than anything. So that's gonna be impressive. Let's see what that turns into when we actually find out more information. They're talking about a release in maybe 2022 or early 2023. Again, we'll just have to keep an eyeball on that. But uh, for now, let's uh, let's check to see what they say about the graphics cards and the prices dropping because they're saying graphics cards are actually starting to drop down in price, which is being reported in a couple different websites, which is kind of interesting. And part of it, I think, has to do with the fact that China is cracking down on their crypto miners over there. So that helps the rest of the world because, I mean, people were just flooding to sell their GPs over there. And I think there was one place where you had to buy uh, $40,000 worth of I'm not even sure what GPU it was, but it was uh, several hundred GPUs that you were getting, and they were all $250 below MSRP, which was a heck of a deal, but you're not getting any boxes, you're not getting any warranty, and you're also having to spend $40,000 on GPUs. So who has that money laying around? Prices are going down. Expect that. Also, I'm starting to see stock improve. You know, micro centers here in the US, if you guys have a micro center, you know, nearby, an hour away, two hours away, honestly, several hours away, I would consider going there to get a GPU because they're having good stock. Maybe give them a call first, see, you know, when they get them in stock so you can try to plan, but they don't sell online. So you have to go to the physical store to get them in the United States. But there's pictures online, micro centers, like stocked pretty well with GPUs, which is impressive. So the RTX 3080 has actually been in Best Buy in stock a little bit more. So that's another place you can get it online. This was posted seven days ago by Matt Swider. I'm gonna post this link here. He's actually helping people get these GPUs. Actually, look at this, uh, 3060s, 3070s, 3070 uh, TIs, uh, 3090s, and some AMD Ryzen CPUs. So uh, he's sharing the information on how to get this. If you guys are interested in that, I'm gonna leave that below because I think this is definitely gonna help somebody. And again, stock is starting to improve. The prices are closer to MSRP. They're not really below it or super cheap, but if you want them closer to MSRP, there's availability, check that out. Now that actually makes sense uh, that they're starting to have more CPUs in stock because uh, Dr. Lisa Su, the CEO of AMD, has stated that the supply is gonna start improving with every quarter. And that's gonna be a really big deal because right now, I mean, if you're trying to get any 11th gen Intel processors, which I think kind of the 10th gens are, are better at this point, but a lot of people are kind of resorting to pre-built systems you know, to kind of get proper hardware without having to overpay. Dr. Lisa Sue said that AMD is working hard to increase the production capacity in every quarter and hopes to catch up with demand by the holiday season. We'll see if that's true. We'll see if that if that plays out that way, but that'll be really good news. I mean, again, we're hoping to see, you know, PlayStations, Xboxes, CPUs, GPUs, more in stock for the holiday season. And again, once that season comes in, it's really going to increase the demand again. So we'll see how that plays out for that month or two. So I think there might be more than one person out there who has skipped the upgrade from a 9th gen Intel to a 10th gen or maybe even the 11th gen. I'm kind of holding out for the 12th gen. And as we can see, guys, the leaks that are coming out are actually pretty neat. And by neat, I mean they're very powerful. So right now, the uh, Core i9 12900K, 12700K, and the 12600K Alder Lake S has been leaked and check out these numbers here guys so the core i9 1200k is outperforming a ryzen 9 5900x and the 12700k is going to be outperforming the 5900x and this is going to be the big deal right here guys the core i5 12600k which is probably going to be an amazing bang for the buck cpu is outperforming a Ryzen 5800X. I'm curious to see what these prices are gonna come out. You know, they're showing eight big cores and eight little cores, 5.3 gigahertz boost. And then the uh, other cores are gonna be 3.9 with an all core boost of 3.7. And actually look at that, the power 228 watts. So that'll be kind of interesting. All right, guys, so uh, on approach, the first aircraft we're going to have here is going to be an, it's an auto gyro helicopter type creation airplane thing here. It's actually pretty neat. Here's a picture of it. I took just a couple of weeks ago. It flew into Miami International Airport from the north and then departed to the south. I was super, super excited just to see it because it was so unique. In fact, it flies more like a plane than anything, uh, and it also takes off more like a plane. But, I mean, check this out. Blue Mesh has done an amazing job here. Look at this, look at the detail. I mean, it's it's showing some wear and tear on here. The tires have a little bit of wear and tear even on the the fiber or the carbon fiber uh, wheel coverings, the fairings, that's just way too cool. It actually looks like it's used. So I absolutely love that when they do that with aircraft. Look at this up here. 
I mean, at this point, you might really want to take a look at this aircraft because it looks a little beat up. <laughs> but anyways, I'm super excited. It looks super awesome. I love that look. And even the mesh, the details on here. Well done. So I believe they actually got the uh, CAD designs from the manufacturer, which is really neat. I might be wrong, but I think I just read that there. So expect this coming out here in just a bit. Uh, I lied. I actually don't know when it's coming out, but I'll keep you guys updated as soon as I find any more information. Oh, look at that. There we go. That's way too cool. All right, guys. The next we have coming out is the PA28-161 Warrior 2, which is going to be for Microsoft Lightsim 2020. Obviously, uh, we don't cover the other sims here. I do apologize. I just really don't have time to fly multiple sims. But anyways, guys, this is the Warrior 2. It's going to be a fixed tricycle gear landing aircraft, 160 horsepower, four-cylinder engine, fixed pitch propeller, so pretty straightforward simple to fly and it should be a lot of fun so we'll see what just flight comes out with i think they they've normally put out pretty good quality products and i mean it looks really really good so far they're showing i think 4k pbr materials uh high level textures detail and clarity i mean i think it looks pretty good so far so no date yet i i believe this video here is from july 7th so i'll keep you guys updated as soon as we get any more information on that Guys, we're also going to be getting this Chironado 170 Bravo model. I believe we're also going to get the Tundra version. And this actually looks pretty pr impressive. Look at this. Nice. It looks well done. This one looks a little bit cleaner, a little bit less worn. Man, look at the reflections on it. PBR has done so well. So just had to highlight that one. I think it's another one that really neat. I think the Cessna 140 either just came out or or it uh, is about to come out. So that's another one to look out for. The Cessna 140, Cessna 170. Keep an eye on those. I'll have them linked below. And actually, guys, I do have it here on my list. The Cessna 140, check it out. It's actually looking pretty good. And they've just added floats to it. So this little float upgrade was free. And I thought that was really smart of them. And, and just really cool that they gave us that. We're going to have seven liveries, three different versions. This one's actually released now. $28 uh, USD by Aeroplane Heaven. And uh, check that out in the links below if you guys are interested in that one. I'm probably going to pick this one up. Maybe the 170, but definitely this one because of the, the floats. I definitely want the floats. Now, finally, getting into the Honda Jet, guys. So this is going to be freeware. And it's been worked on by, I believe, uh, Marwan GH7929. I'm super excited. It's actually looking really good, guys. Check this out. I mean, honestly, we've all seen some potato airplanes being released, and uh, I don't want to call it Captain Sim. This is looking pretty good. And he doesn't have to make it this good. This is freeware. So he's just working hard, making a, a great product. And look at this. It's just such a unique design. Actually, check out the speed brakes there. I'm assuming that's what that is. That's just way too cool. 420 Hotel Jula. And actually, I, I talk to these guys departing exec all the time. Actually, they like to fly in VFR like 9,000 feet and then just descend to Executive Airport. It's kind of annoying. It really is. Because then at the last second, they'll call for flight following, descending through everyone. But anyways, such a cool plane. Super excited to check it out in the sim, especially since it's freeware. So, guys, that'll wrap up this week's uh, brief. I know it was quite a lot of information. I try to keep it short for you guys. But if you guys have any questions, any comments, concerns, leave them linked below. If you guys have any comments or questions, anything you guys are curious or want some more information about, let me know in the comments below. But super grateful you guys decided to stick to the end. I know you guys kind of trail off. It's kind of hard to listen to me talk this long. But again, I'd just like to put this content together, give you guys some information on what's going on with the industry, light sim, tech, VR stuff. So thank you for watching. Be well, take it easy, and I'll catch you next time. Later. Peace out. Now, if you guys want to stay for, away from AMD, now, if you guys aren't even interested in AMD, you know, some of you guys, I think I have as well. As we can see, uh, the rumors, uh, and as we can see, the leaks are starting to come out with Alder Lake S, and they're going to have this new two. All right, guys, so this blue mesh design. Uh, so on approach, guys, we're going to have a couple aircraft here. The first one's going to be uh, a blue mesh brought to us. So on approach, guys, we're going to have a couple aircraft. The first one's going to be brought to us by, by, by Blue Mesh. And um, 